I'm mostly selling you on the idea of U substitution as a way to find antiderivatives. But anti-differentiation is just a means to an end. The real goal at this point in the course is evaluating definite integrals. Well, here's an example of a definite integral. Let's evaluate the integral of 2x times x squared plus 1 to the third power dx as x goes from 0 to 2. We can do it with u substitution. The substitution that I want to make is u equals x squared plus 1. And in that case, du, well, it's the derivative of this is 2x and dx. And that's great, because I've got a 2x dx right there. So this integration problem becomes the integral x goes from 0 to 2. Uh, but what's the integrand now? It's u cubed du. And I know an antiderivative of u cubed. It's u to the fourth over 4. And I want to make sure to evaluate this when x equals 0 and 2. Now we replace u by x squared plus 1. So this is x squared plus 1 to the fourth over 4. And I want to evaluate at 0 and 2. Now we plug in x equals 2 and x equals 0 and take the difference. OK, well, when I plug in 2, I get 2 squared plus 1 to the fourth over 4. And when I plug in 0, I get 0 squared plus 1 to the fourth over 4. What's 2 squared plus 1? That's 5 to the fourth over 4. And that's 1 to the fourth, which is just 1 uh, quarter. And now I've got to think about what's 5 to the fourth. Well, that's 25 times 25. That's 625 over 4 minus 1 over 4. And now I can combine these into a single fraction. That's 624 over 4. And that I can simplify a bit. That's 156. We did it. But I could have finished this problem off in a slightly different but equivalent way. Well, let's back up. I'll get rid of this. And let's suppose that I didn't go down this path, but I just stopped here. The problem is that my endpoints are in terms of x, but my integrand now is in terms of u. So I'm just going to change those endpoints. So instead, I'll see that that integration problem is the same as the integral of u cubed du. And when x is equal to 0, u is 1. And when x is equal to 2, u is 2 squared plus 1, which is 5. So if I change the endpoints to be in terms of u, then I don't have to go back to x. So again, I know an antiderivative. It's u to the fourth over 4. And now I'm evaluating it at 5 and 1 in terms of u and taking the difference. So when I plug in uh, 5, I just get 5 to the fourth over 4. And when I plug in 1, I just get 1 to the fourth over 4. And 5 to the fourth is 25 squared, which is 625 over 4. And this is now the same as before, minus a quarter. And just like before, this ends up being 156. Let's summarize these two different approaches. The first time I went through this problem, I found the antiderivative in terms of x. Right? I wanted to integrate this, and I found an antiderivative, and then I just evaluated it at b and a and took the difference. In the second method, instead of finding the antiderivative in terms of x, I changed the endpoints to make the endpoints be in terms of u. So I took this original problem, and after making the substitution u equals g of x, then I rewrote the endpoints to go from g of a to g of b in terms of u. And then I found an antiderivative of f prime u du, now f of u, and I evaluated that at g of b and g of a and took the difference. At the end of it, I'm doing the same calculation. In both cases, I'm calculating you know, f of g of b f of g of b, and I'm subtracting f of g of a, right, f of g of a. But I'm setting it up slightly differently. In the first case, I'm finding the antiderivative in terms of x. And in the second case, I'm changing the bounds on the integral to be in terms of u.